Hi, I'm Lisa, and you're watching Wood Tools Workshop. This video is part four and the final video in the series on building a metal cutting station. Part three ended with us sliding the assembled carriage onto the rail. We pick up there now, checking the alignment of the rail. We showed the steel plates in the U-channel being installed on the base back in part one because one was all about that base. About that base. No treble. But actually, we couldn't install the U-channel until we knew where the grinder would touch. So now that it's mounted, we can mark that spot on the base and install the steel. But first, we need to know that the tracking of the blade is truly at a 90 degree angle to the front of the base. The arm is held to the base with a couple of 3 8 inch carriage bolts, and there's no provision for adjusting its position. You just bolt it in place and the alignment of those two holes determines the alignment of the rail. It turns out to be off by a quarter of an inch at the front end. And here's how that happened. From center to center, the two holes for the bolts are two inches apart, drilled at the back of the base. It's approximately 20 inches to the front edge. The rail is out of true by a quarter inch at the front. So if we're off by a quarter at 20 inches, and the distance to the second hole is 2 inches, how much are we off at the second hole? To go from 20 inches to 2 inches, you just divide by 10. So divide that quarter of an inch by 10, and that's how far off the mark the center of that second hole is. 1 40th of an inch. Fred was getting sloppy. What we needed to do now is cut a tapered shim to fit between the arm and the rail. It should be the length of the arm and the height of the rail and a quarter of an inch thick at one end, tapering down to nothing. We plane some half inch stock down to a quarter inch on the planer. We needed the taper on the face of the board so we did it on the joiner. You set the rear table to the height of the taper and place the board so that the start of the taper rests on the rear table just past the cutter head. Then push the board across the cutter head to create the taper. This method is for when the stock is shorter than the front table. If it's longer, there's a different procedure. Normally the safety guard is in place on our joiner. We've removed it for this cut because it's too difficult trying to hold it out of the way while setting the edge of the board just past the cutter heads. This method is dangerous for multiple reasons. The cutter head tries to pull the board backward. If it pulls the end of the board off the back table and into itself, it can shatter it or send it flying. We mark the shape of the arm on our shim and cut it on the bandsaw. Recently a viewer asked why we often seem to screw or bolt our project together without gluing it. You see one reason for that here. We'd be in trouble if we had already glued the rail to the arm. Sometimes it's necessary to come back and reposition or modify a part. So we skip the glue and proceed on to completion of the project to make sure it's all working correctly and then disassemble and glue the parts. It's not something we normally show in a video but it bears mentioning since a viewer asked. Once we got the rail aligned properly we cut the dados for the metal which you saw in part one. Now we cut the U-channel to size. We were thinking this is the last time we'll have to cut metal freehand like this. After sizing the U-channel, we drilled and countersunk three holes in it and then screwed it to the base. Then we used the cutting station to shape the angle iron that would become the fence. Once 
and it turned out the U channel wasn't our last freehand cut. Going down the middle of the angle wasn't going to happen at the station. Now, all along, a concern had been worrying us. Can that flexible metal strap really hold the grinder in place all by itself? We doubted it, but that's how the author of the article presented it, so we were going to give him the benefit of the doubt. When we started cutting the metal plates, it turned out that the doubt was well founded. The grinder began turning in the strap, and we had to constantly readjust it. Here you can see Fred holding the grinder to keep it straight. After cutting the plates to size, we drilled holes to anchor them to the base. We set up a stop block and stacked the plates to drill all eight of the outer holes with it. Then we repositioned the stop block and drilled the inside holes. Countersinking them took a bit longer as we couldn't stack the plates for that. After the plates were screwed to the base, we cut a couple of one inch links from a quarter inch steel rod. These serve as stops at each end of the rail to keep the assembly from sliding off in either direction. And now it's time to do something about that twisting grinder. We decided these two horns or ears or whatever would hold it still if we made a cradle to fit them. We have to make sure our new screws don't hit the pre-existing one. Now we add the new piece to the assembly and we're ready to go. We hope you liked this video and found it useful. Okay, here's what to do now. Hit the like button and share this video with your friends and family. Click subscribe to get notified when we post new videos. And leave us a comment with your thoughts. Thanks for watching folks. See you soon.